Hey guys, it's Ange McCabe here with Myrtle Moss Photography. Today, I am going to be sharing with you my new Inspire Volume 2 preset toolkit and brush set. So this is the first time I've had any adjustment brushes included in a preset, um, which I'm really excited for. There's nothing else you should need beyond the toolkit and the brushes on top of the preset here. So if you have used my Inspire, my original Inspire preset, it's a little bit similar, but some of the tones are, they're actually quite different. Um, every time I make a new preset, I, um, I make it more refined and less adjustments need to be done to it. So I'm extremely happy with this one and I hope you guys enjoy it too. So I've gone ahead and pulled a bunch of images of mine. Um, I have tested these also on Canon, Nikon, and Sony users' photos and straight across the board, they're absolutely fine with all of those brands of camera. Um, I tried to pick some images, different skin tones, different lighting scenarios so that you guys could get an overall um, idea of what these presets and a uh, toolkit are all about. So I'll uh, might as well just jump right in here. Um, so over here, I'm just in Lightroom Classic. Um, over here, I have installed my Inspire Volume 2 preset toolkit and brushes. So over here, we have the, the base preset, and then we have all the adjustments um, that you might need. Um, you can obviously go further into the adjustments over here, um, but I have yet to have to go beyond the basic editing panel here for editing my own photos. Um, and if there's anything that I need to do, any little adjustments, I go over here to the adjustment brush and have my um, brushes installed over here. They're called Myrtle and Moss. I have a ton of them here for doing any little um, tweaks that you need to. So uh, I'm gonna jump in here and start editing for you guys. Um, so here I'm just going to start off by straightening. I'm a sucker for keeping my photos really straight. Um, and I am just gonna edit it in nice and, uh, nice and centered there. Perfect. Okay, so I haven't done anything to this photo. I shoot on a Canon 5D Mark IV. And this one was taken with a 35 millimeter 1.4 Canon. Okay, so I'm gonna just click my base preset and right off the bat, you can see there that I don't even think I would need to do anything to that. Um, it keeps the skin tones really nice and rich. Um, some of the photos, depending on the lighting, the skin go tones can go quite um, saturated. So I do have a little toolkit over here to fix that. Um, I want to keep this image nice and bright. So I don't even think I'm going to um, do really anything to it, to be honest. Maybe just increase my contrast just a little bit. Um, honestly, I'd call that one a day. Okay, let's move to this one. We got lots of photos to get through, so hopefully you guys have some time to watch. Okay, so here is the photo that I took for my most recent online posing workshop. Um, this one, I actually underexposed it, so this is the original. Um, I don't typically underexpose this much, but I just so happen to for this photo. So I'm just gonna increase my exposure a little bit there, click my base preset, and with this one, as a one click, uh, definitely needs a lot of contrast and temperature. So we're gonna increase it. I like to edit my photos really warm. It also needs tint. So as soon as I increase the magenta in the tint, it's gonna really bring out those nice undertones of the skin. And then when I bring my exposure back down is when all that color is gonna come out in the skin and in the, um, in the bouquet here. So uh, I haven't done much to it, but you can just see the difference here. Um, it's really nice so far. Okay, I'm just gonna increase my shadows a little bit. And then also I'm gonna use, I use dehaze a little bit to add a bit more punchy colors as well as contrast. So not too much, just a little bit there. Um, then I'm gonna show you guys how I use my brushes. So I would say that her skin is just a little bit too warm there for my liking. Um, and his face is quite dark, so I wanna brighten those up as well. So I'm gonna go over here to my brush set and just click here. Um, when you install them, they will just pop up in alphabetical order. So I kept them all Myrtle and Moss so you know where you're looking. Okay, so I'm going to just go uh, click Myrtle and Moss Lighten Up and just make my brush a little bit smaller with the bracket keys there. Okay, so that one actually was a little bit too bright for my liking, so let's just bring it down a little bit. There we go. Okay, I'd be happy with that. Let's brighten up his face a little bit too. Okay, I honestly think, I don't think I would do much more to this photo. Um, another thing that you, maybe that I could do is um, add some natural vignetting. So the preset automatically removes the automatic 
lens vignetting that your um, that your lens creates. So um, if you want to add that back in, plus a little bit extra, you can just click the natural vignetting there, which I actually really like in this photo. Um, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so this one is nice and it was quite, um, quite cool actually, this photo. Uh, I actually really like this raw image. Not too bad. Okay, so I'm just gonna click my base preset. So it is just one preset and then you have all of the adjustments you would like to do in the toolkit. So it's kind of like having all these types of presets because a lot of times when you buy someone's pack, they'll have like the same preset, but then with like the greens tweaked or the reds tweaked. So I just have um, a nice combination of uh, a nice versatile pack here for you while keeping it all consistent by having just one preset. So I am just going to increase my warmth a bit. You can see their nice, um, the nice tones coming out in their skin. I'm going to increase my magenta a little bit too. Not too much. Okay, and increase my shadows a bit there too. Okay. I want to keep this photo quite moody, so I might actually bring it down a little bit. Just like that. And maybe add in some vignetting back in here. Oh yeah, that's good. Okay. Um... I might just add a little bit of brightness to his face. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my lighten up brush again, just right here on the highlights. Um, when I add any highlights, I can't stress enough how important it is just to keep the highlights where natural highlights occur. Otherwise it starts to look, um, the shadows will start looking muddy. And when you start placing highlights where they're not supposed to be, um, it just makes your photo look off. Okay. So I'm not going to do any skin retouching or anything like that, but I do have a brush that can, I'm going to hit done and then just toggle over here. I do have a brush that can kind of smooth out skin a little bit. So I'm going to go over here and click my skin smoothing and that just kind of brightens up. Uh, I would still probably need to go into Photoshop and do a little bit of the, um, the other little tweaks that I would like, just the little fine details on the skin, but I would be happy with that. Just kind of gave her skin a nice glow there. Okay. I think that would be about good. If I wanted to go a little bit warmer, maybe I could, but um, I'm pretty happy with it just like that. All right, let's go to the next one. So this one was also taken for my online workshop. You guys probably saw the little GIF I made of this. Apparently Facebook does not like this photo because this is too sexual for Facebook. <laughs> the act of removing an article of clothing is too sexual. So cover your eyes if this offends you. I'm so sorry. So I just clicked the preset. I'm going to turn down my exposure. And uh, even though I like my images warm, this is still maybe a little bit too warm for me. So I'm going to bring down my temperature. Um, whenever I shoot nine times out of 10, I'm using cloudy or shady mode. Um, unless it, there's a lot of ambient lighting and it's really, my images are too warm out of straight out of camera. Um, then I'll go to Kelvin or auto white balance. But for the most part, I like to keep my images pretty warm straight out of camera. So, um, I really didn't do much to this. All I did was temperature and exposure. Um, I could, I don't think I like the natural vignetting in there. It's already... Uh, kind of makes her legs too dark. So I'm just going to leave it like that and we'll move on to the next photo. Um, so this one, I picked this one to edit because it is quite bright. Um, so I wanted to show you how clean it keeps the, uh, the whites. So as much as the image can be very warm, the whites are still white. Um, that's kind of what I always like, my, what I aim to achieve with my presets. So I'm just going to go ahead and decrease my exposure a bit. I think this might be a little bit warm for me. So let's just bring it down a touch and it might even be a little bit on the green side. So let's increase the um, hint, the tint there just a little bit. Maybe increase my shadows. Beautiful. Um, just overall looking at this photo, it's pretty well balanced, but I think I want to brighten up this side a bit. So I'm just gonna go in here and use a graduated filter and just drag it across. There we go. Oh, it's actually just going to um, save all of my settings here from my last brush. So I'm just going to double click them. My little reset button wasn't working there. Okay. Let's just go in here and do a graduated filter. So I just click and drag, and then you can do whatever you want with it. So I'm just going to brighten it up just like that. Maybe add a little bit of warmth there just to keep it nicely balanced. 
there. So I wanted to show you guys that if you edit a little bit brighter, a little bit more airy, um, that they still work really nicely for that kind of look. You can go really clean if you want by uh, going less warm, which is nice if you like that kind of look. Uh, for the sake of this, I might actually leave it a little bit um, cooler than I normally would edit. And then I will maybe go in here and just brighten up her face a little bit there. I'm just going to click my lighten up one. Oh, gorgeous. That worked really good. Okay, perfect. Move on to the next photo. This is one of my all time favorite sessions that I did for one of my retreats last year. I would shoot this day over and over if I could. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to click my, ba my uh, base preset and you can see this is almost just a one click for this photo. Um, their legs are a little bit dark, so I'm going to go to my brushes here and use lighten up. Just make my brush a little bit bigger and just brush on where I want that. And honestly, that is all I would do to this photo. Um, I do have grain in here if you want to um, add some grain. One thing that um, I don't I don't use this often because I like to go in and open my photos in Photoshop just to give them uh, one you know a good quick look over, do anything I need to. Um, but for those who don't like to spend a lot of time in post-processing or in skin retouching, some people really, really love this toolkit right here, which is smooth skin with grain. So it just makes the skin really creamy, but in order to make it so that they don't look too plasticky and like too creamy, um, there's a grain on top. So you have to be okay with grain, but it's a really nice fix for people who don't like to do um, much editing. So here, I'll just zoom in here so you guys can see. And I'll click smooth skin with grain there. Um, her skin is flawless, so is his. So um, this particular photo doesn't really show how great it actually does work. Um, but it works well enough that it can actually um, mask some minor blemishes as well. Or make them a lot less noticeable anyways. So here's the before and after of that one. Kept it nice and clean. Actually, I might as well show you guys the before and afters of these ones as well go. Perfect. Okay. So now I'll move on to this one, make it full size again. So I'm just going to click my base preset. Here's a good example. So she has quite tanned skin. So, um, right off the bat, I would say that her skin is a little bit too, um, too warm for than it is in real life. So we'll adjust that, but I'm going to increase my tint a bit just to bring out the kind of the reds and the magenta in the surroundings and maybe increase my exposure just a little bit more too. Okay, I'm gonna increase my contrast just a bit and maybe add some vignetting in there as well. Perfect. Okay, let's see if this um, toolkit will fix her skin a little bit. So you can click, I don't know if I like it for her, um, but if you click skin fix, it gets rid of that um, the punchiness of the the color of the skin so I'm just gonna go ahead and click it and then I'm gonna warm up the image again just to kind of um, balance it out a little bit more and now when I increase my contrast is when you're gonna get that color back um, so just I think because of her foundation um, uh, her face the fa <laughs> the skin on her face is um, a little bit cooler than I would like so I'm gonna go into my brushes and I actually created this brush called Golden Glow for Sky, um, but it actually works really nice on skin. So we can go ahead and give it a shot here. There, just gonna brush it on. Perfect, that looks great. And if there's any shadows that we think are maybe too red, you can go over here to the brushes again and click Shadow Fix and Desaturate. So this kind of brightens up the shadows and just kind of knocks off the vibrancy um, there we go. That was really actually here. I'll redo that and I'll zoom in so you guys can see. It's going to go like this. Okay. This is a really good example here. Um, so click my brush, go in with the, it's called, um, shadow fix and desaturate. So I'm just going to brush on here I'm gonna make my brush a little bit bigger. You can see that it just knocked off any of that vibrancy that was, um, in the shadowed areas. And I think that's good. Yeah. I like that. I might just bring my temperature down just a bit. Awesome. Okay, let's just see the before and after. Oopsies. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's move on to the next one. 
All right, so this one was taken at the Kindle workshop that I hosted last year with Henry Tu and Nicole Ashley. Um, so I'm just gonna click my base preset and you can see that the darker skin tones work really nicely still with this. Um, this image might be a little bit warm, so I'm gonna bring it down a little bit in temperature and maybe push my tint a little bit, bring out the nice warm undertones of their skin. Okay, I think that would be good for me. I love how the whites are really nice and crisp in this photo. Okay, here's another one from the same session. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply the preset. Okay, I'm gonna decrease my exposure a little bit here. I wanna keep his skin really nice and rich. I'm gonna bring down my temperature just a little bit and bring up my tint, my magenta. There we go. Okay, let's see if the vignetting would do. Oh yeah, I think I'm gonna add the natural vignetting back in there as well. And I think that is about all I do. I could maybe brighten up his face a little bit. He does have his face turned away from the light. So it wouldn't hurt to maybe um, just increase the light on his face a little bit there. Okay, perfect. I'd be happy with that. There's the before and after. All right, here is another picture I just took for, whoopsies, for um, my online posing workshop. Here's the base preset. It's a little bit too warm for me. Let's bring down that temperature and increase my tint. Beautiful, increase my shadows and contrast a little bit. Um, this photo could probably have some vignetting as well to it. Oh yeah, I like that. This is kind of nice and moody, so keep it like that. And I don't even think I would do anything else to this photo, to be honest. So let's, we got lots to get through. So maybe I'll just uh, continue on. Um, okay, here's a session that I shot for the Portrait Masters Conference that just wrapped up last week. So um, I'm kind of low key obsessed with this shoot actually. It's totally in my element. Um, so I'm just gonna increase my exposure. I want to keep this one like moody, but also nice and vibrant and bright. So if that even makes sense, are you allowed to use those words in the same sentence? I don't know, but I'm doing it. Um, so this preset, uh, I really wanted to focus on blues because um, I found that. So usually what I do when I'm creating a new product or a new preset or anything like that, usually what happens is I have a problem. Um, I could be editing something and I'm tweaking something too much or I'm having a really difficult time editing a forest photo or something. So usually when I'm making a new product or a new preset, it's to solve one of my own problems that I'm having. Um, so therefore I know that other people are having the same problems as me too. So that's why I like to make solutions for you. So this is why I really like this preset. I found a lot of my, um, I had to edit a lot of blue suits um, this, this wedding season. Um, navy is definitely a really popular color for suits and also a lot of jeans, a lot of jean jackets and stuff. So I really wanted to make those blues really nice. Um, if you do not want blue in your photo, or sometimes uh, what I've found is that white shirts can pick up a bit of a blue cast to them just from um, like the shadows can pull blue. So if you don't want the blue in the shirt, you can use this remove the blue. Um, um, it's actually not really showing up too well in this photo, uh, but it's a nice little fix if you have any blue shadows in your photo. Okay, so let me carry on with this photo. Um, I don't think I would do too much here actually um, to it. Maybe increase. So she has a bit of a shadow here on her face um, from, I'm oh, sorry, I'm getting Facebook notifications. Okay, so she has a little bit of shadowing here just from the, the hat creating the shadow. So I'm gonna go over here to my brush tool and I'm just gonna use actually just my lighten up brush because I actually think the tones of her skin are good. Um, so I don't need to use the desaturate one. There we go. And I might as well just go a little bit on his face too. And maybe her hand. Okay, now let's zoom out. Okay, I'm gonna also go down here on her leg and their hands. And I'm just gonna actually, I might even bump it up just a little bit more. Increase my shadows and my exposure. Not too much, but that should be good. Yeah, I'm happy with that might bring down my shadows just a little bit just to make it a little bit more punchy and you know what? I'm gonna go back in here with another 
lighten up brush uh, just to further increase some of those shadows there or lighten them up. There we go. Okay, perfect. I'm happy with that. On to the next one. So this is the same shoot, um, just a raw file. Oh, actually here, let's quickly do the before and after of that one. There we go. Oh, I like it. I actually edited it quite bright, but I still really like it. Okay, here's a nice little detail shot. I love the goosebumps here on her chest. Uh, kind of gave me all the feels. Um, okay, so I'm gonna click my base preset. I'm gonna increase my exposure and then see where the tones are of her skin. Um, so here we actually had the sunlight um, coming directly onto her. Normally I'm uh, backlighting, but here the sun had just gone down, but the sky was still really glowy. So her skin had a really nice warm glow to it. Sometimes when I'm struggling editing skin tones, I always have to think, what did it look like in real life? What was the tones of her skin in real life? Like what, where was the light? What was it doing to the tones of her skin? And then it just kind of allows me to not stress so much. So if the sun was really golden, I'm not going to fight it too much in post-processing. Um, if it was really golden in real life, I'm going to keep it that way. So I might even increase my temperature even a bit more and my tint, just the magenta a bit. Um, and I do want to keep this one nice and moody just to really um, bring in the attention right here of him touching her neck. I might even add in that vignetting will also kind of further um, bring that detail or bring the attention to right there. Um, honestly, I think that's all I do to this photo. Okay, here's a beautiful portrait from a few years ago, maybe two years, three years ago. Okay, so I'm going to just click my base preset. I'm going to bring down my exposure and up my contrast. Okay. You know what I might actually do is also, um, before I push my contrast too much, I'm going to use the dehaze um, function, which I really like. Uh, actually, I don't want it that much. We'll see here. This is, I haven't edited this photo in a very long time, and I have never used my, this preset on it. So um, it's all trial and error as I go here with you guys. Um, oh, I really kind of like the autumn vibes to this one. Um, this is a lot warmer than I would normally edit, but I kind of love it, to be honest. Uh, I'm going to increase my highlights here just a little bit. And I might even bring down my blacks just a bit more, just so that it's like even a little bit deeper and rich. Oh, I'm actually really digging this. Ooh, this is good. Let's see the before and after here. Okay, this is not normally how I'd edit, but I kind of love it. <laughs> um, so I know a lot of people complain about greens. Um, I didn't build these presets to hate on greens by any means um, because I live in the Pacific Northwest and I'm surrounded by a lot of green. So I didn't intentionally have it so that the greens were desaturated. It was more so in order to get the right skin tones, I had to remove certain colors. And um, But what I have done is I created a brush that adds back in the green to um, to different areas if you want it. So I have a couple different ones here. I have deep forest, so it's a bit more like rich, um, kind of foresty, um, deeper colors, and then a punchy green, uh, which will be a little bit brighter. So I'll go ahead and show you both. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how you can use the green brushes. I'm gonna actually just try the punchy green on this one, um, just to add back in a little bit if you wanted it. I don't necessarily dig this, but I just wanna show you guys. For the sake of showing you um so yeah this would be a little bit too bright for me but definitely if you want to add those greens back in um you can definitely do that and you can play with all of your saturation and make your little adjustments as well as needed um but yeah it was it's actually come in handy with a wedding i'm i'm currently working on that um we did a lot of forest photos so i'm gonna remove that though just because i'm not totally digging the green in this particular photo but it is there if you want to use it okay um, here's a nice moody photo from a couple weeks ago. So I'm just going to click my base preset. That's like a one clicker, you guys. Damn, that's good. I think I would almost, you can also notice the reds here, um, that it does keep a nice, like, a nice rich red as well. So um, I'm going to make this a little bit warmer, I think, and maybe decrease my exposure a bit just to make it a little bit more moody increase my contrast, and then maybe even some vignetting in there. Okay, um, I might just actually make it a little bit less warm. There, I would be happy with that, I think. See the before and after. 
Beautiful. If I wanted to add some green back in here, maybe we could do that. Let's, whoopsies. Let's give it a shot here. So I'm gonna go in with my, uh, let's try the deep forest. Okay, so I'm gonna actually just increase the brightness a little bit just because um, it kind of darkens it normally. So I kind of built the brush for um, a, like a very sunny forest when you get those really bright greens and it just kind of knocks it back. So um, there, I actually, I really like that. I just kind of brushed on um, the greens back into parts of the trees here. Gorgeous, I really like that actually. Um, I'll do the side by side here again. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Oh, I love this one. This is from a workshop uh, a couple years ago. Just gonna straighten it out just a bit. Okay, we also have greens in this photo. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click my preset. Oh, I like that. This one kind of looks really filmy. I kind of like it muted. I'm not gonna edit it like that, but I do like it. I really get, um, especially if I just clicked like the smooth skin with green, this would probably be a really nice photo. Just let my computer catch up. There we go. Um, yeah, but I'm going to undo that green just cause I don't, uh, like to add green till the very finishing as the very finishing touch. If, um, if I need to do any skin retouching, I never apply a green till I'm finished. Um, so I'm just going to increase my contrast and my shadows, bring them up just a little bit. And then I'm going to play around with my temperature. I'm going to, I think there's good. And my tint, maybe just bring up magentas just a touch. Okay, bring down my shadows a little bit there too. Yeah, I like that. Let's see what the um, vignetting is. Yeah, actually, I think, I totally think that this photo could handle it. Um, I might even just play around here with, um, uh, with a graduated filter here. Okay, so I'm gonna change the brush to just my golden glow. So once you actually um, apply your brush or your graduated filter, it actually holds on to the effect that you last used. So um, so it happened to be holding on to the, the green um, brush that I just used. Um, so I just changed it to my golden glow one. Uh, what I also might do is just, I want it to look a little bit more glowy in that corner. So I'm gonna decrease my clarity and then maybe even up my exposure just a bit. There we go. So that really looks like almost like it's kind of dusty, like it was a dusty road. And then uh, that should be pretty good. I might go in here with my brush one more time and just warm her face up just a little bit with my golden glow right here. There we go. Just her knees just a bit. Perfect. All right, let's move to the next. Actually, here's the before and after. There we go. All right. Ah, I'm like obsessed with this photo. Okay, there, sorry, this is the raw. I guess I had it, I was playing with it earlier. Um, so I'm gonna just click my base preset and I'm gonna increase my exposure just a bit. I'm looking at the skin tones on her face, making sure I'm happy with them. She has a little bit of a tan herself, so I'm not gonna be fighting the warmth there. Um, I'm gonna add in some natural vignetting. And honestly, that is all I would do for this photo. Let's have a little side by side. Oh, sorry, the uh, <laughs> the before picture is not the original. Um, it's That one is not, um, whoopsies. That one is also edited. This one's actually with Inspire, um, my first Inspire uh, preset. Okay, I'm gonna move along to this one. This was an amazing session I had a couple years ago. Um, oh, it was just such an awesome creative day. Had some really good vibes going on with this group of women that got together for the shoot. I'm gonna click my base preset. I'm gonna decrease exposure here a little bit. Her, her skin is very um, fair, so I don't wanna make sure that we keep her nice and warm looking. So I'm gonna increase the temperature here. Not like too warm, but just make sure that she doesn't have any like grayish or like too white of undertones on her skin or bluish. Um, I'm gonna do that by increasing the tint here. There we go. I'm looking at the whites and making sure that they're not too um, 
to magenta and maybe increase my contrast just a little bit. There we go. I don't think I'll add any vignetting in there. I mean, I could, but I kind of like this one nice and bright. Perfect. Here's the before and after. Okay, here's another one from the Portrait Masters. I'm gonna click my base preset, increase my exposure. Actually, I'm just gonna reset that. There's the original. Increase, uh, click my base preset, increase my exposure a little bit. There we go, increase contrast. And then probably add a natural vignette in there as well. Perfect. I'm like low key obsessed with this photo. I love how she's like really holding onto his arm there too. All right, I could call that a day. Perfect. I'd probably do a bit of skin retouching here. She just has um, a little bit of a dark shadow going on there with her skin, so I'd fix that. But for the sake of this, we're not going to do it right now. Um, I'm going to click my uh, base preset. So this one, I love the color of the um, the fall leaves there in the background, and it just goes so nicely with her dress. I'm going to add some vignetting in there too increase my exposure a little bit. This photo definitely needs some magenta though. It's for me, it's too green. So let's just bring that up a little bit. Looking at the skin tones mostly, um, that should be good. Increase contrast a bit. Yeah, that's good. And then I'm just gonna brush some, um, some lightness here on her face, just a bit. And maybe on his face too, just a bit there. And then I'm just gonna put some highlights where the highlights naturally occur okay gorgeous i would call that one done maybe maybe contrast just a little bit more perfect here's the before and after okay here's another one for portrait masters um so here we have the background's quite blue but i really really was hoping for a sunset this day so let's uh warm this right up make it look like they're not actually freezing <laughs> so i'm just going to increase my exposure a bit here okay let's go ahead and warm this photo up okay so as I warm it up, I might actually decrease the exposure a little bit just to keep it nice and moody. I'm gonna increase my contrast. When you increase your contrast, it also makes your colors a lot more vibrant. So there we go. Maybe decrease my exposure just, uh, no, actually let's keep it like that. I think when I add the vignetting back in, it'll kind of, there we go. That's the missing part. Okay, perfect. Um, let's see here. I think I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add a bit more of tint a little bit more magenta, just a bit. I think that should be good. And then I'm gonna go in, and I like this preset. It um, it really maintained the maroon color of his jacket, which was really nice. Um, so I'm gonna just go and click lighten up on, actually I don't think his face needed that. Maybe a little bit. And then his hand, <laughs> good old fashioned butt grab there. Okay. Um, I think that's about it. I might do a little bit of um, skin smoothing just because she was cold. So her skin was a little bit mottled there. Um, so I would go into Photoshop and just kind of smooth that out. Um, but other than that, I think this would be good. Here's the side by side. That one really transformed um, through editing there. Okay, moving along. Here is a fun shoot I did a few years back. Um, I, I wanted to pick some colors or some images that had lots of different colors and ones that really maintained the nice bright tones as well. Um, just to show you how versatile that they truly are. So I'm going to click my, um, my base preset and I'm going to increase my contrast. So it did keep the greens there really nicely. As you can see, um, I might even decrease my exposure just a little bit, maybe add some vignetting. Let's see here. Uh, I don't think, actually, I think that's fine. I'm going to increase my temperature just a little bit more. Just looking at her skin tones and the flowers, just kind of overall, um, see how I like it. And then if you watch the reds here, once I add the magenta back in, um, it's going to kind of change the tones of the red and of those, um, those flowers. So there we go. Oh, I really like it. It's really clean, but still like deep, if that makes sense. 
I'm just making up words here. Um, so there's kind of a side by side. If you wanted to, you could play around a bit more and make those um, pinks, um, these pink peonies a little bit more pink. They're pulling a little bit red, uh, but overall I would be happy with that. All right. Okay, here's some good old green again. Um, so I'm just gonna click my base preset. This one, I know it that it needs magenta. I think magenta is going to transform this one. So I'm just gonna push it, push it, push it, push it. There we go. Increase my contrast. Ah, it's coming, it's coming. Add some vignetting in there. Um, increase my exposure a little bit more. Yes, there we go. I think I'd be good. Good to go with that one. There's the before and after. Okay, let's move on to this one. Oops, sorry, that one's already edited. We'll just start from scratch here. Okay, so just clicking my base preset, increase my exposure, increase contrast, and now I'm just gonna pump the warmth a little bit more, and then add in the magenta. And we haven't even left this basic editing panel here, so I just want to show you guys really how easy they are. Um, oops, there we go. Maybe add in some vignetting. Uh, actually, I don't think this photo needs it. We're going to leave it just like that. Perfect. I think we would be done. I'm happy with that. All right. I love this photo. I had so much fun at this workshop that I held. Oh, okay, here's a good example. Sometimes skin tones will pull very orange. So I'm just gonna click base preset. I'm gonna make it cooler and see if I like the skin. Okay, so when I decrease the temperature, I actually really like it. it this is not my style. Um, like I wouldn't keep it this cool, but I feel like some people could, could edit with this really nicely. Like those skin tones are spot on. They're so beautiful. Um, so you could keep it like that. Uh, I might actually keep it like that just because I really like it. Um, I'm just going to brighten up her face just a little bit here. There we go. Um, so yeah, I think I would leave it like that. Um, but you could also um, use the skin fix, uh, which I'm not going to do because it's going to get rid of too much of the natural like orange undertones of the skin. Um, but if you wanted to keep it overall warmer, you could just click the skin fix and it would look nice. Um, so I think I'm just going to leave it like that. Perfect. Okay. So I wanted to show you guys, if you know me, you probably know that I'm obsessed with doing sparkler exit photos. <laughs> They're never going to get old for me. Um, okay. So I'm just going to apply my preset. It's going to look like garbage. It's like absolute trash. <laughs> I'm going to add skin fix to it. I'm also going to add my low light noise reduction which is a magical, magical part of my toolkit. I use it often. Um, and then I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna bring the temperature right down. Look at how crazy that just transformed the image. I haven't even adjusted exposure yet. So I'm gonna increase exposure. I might even have to add some warmth back in, add my contrast. I'm going to pump my whites a little bit for this. I find nice bright sparkler exits are good. Um, I'm gonna just make it a little bit warmer. Oops, that's too much. I think like that would be good. Here's a little before and after action. There we go. Oh, we forgot to do the before and after of this one. There you go. Look how clean it is. I'm obsessed, you guys. Obsessed. Am I allowed to say that about my own stuff? I mean, it's a good thing, right? If I actually like what I put out there. <laughs> That's my goal. Okay. So um, I would go in and add my sparkler overlays. I'm sure that you guys have seen me talk so much about them. It's something that I use in all of my sparkler exit photos. I'm literally obsessed with them. So you can add bokeh in here um, as well as individual sparklers where you need it. Um, this was a pretty successful sparkler exit, so it doesn't necessarily need it. Um, but just adding a little extra something something can just really elevate your image. So if you're finding that you, you want to make your sparkler exits look a little bit more magical, um, they are actual sparklers that I photographed. Um, so they are real. So there's nothing fake about them. They just have to be used properly in order to look um, not noticeable. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and edit this one. Uh, it's like, it's funny because most of these images are actually from my workshops. Um, this was a magical little puppy dog who I was like literally shitting my pants when she actually fell asleep. Oh, 
it was like the, su the sweetest, sweetest little dog. Um, it was like, pinch me. I didn't think it was real life. <laughs> Whenever I'm photographing children, dogs, or babies, my expectations are very low uh, so that you just don't get too disappointed, you know? But this one exceeded my expectations. Um, okay, so she has really dark hair, and I find that it's a little bit distracting in the photo. So I'm just going to decrease my contrast just a bit um, and maybe increase my blacks just a little bit there too. And increase my con... Oh, I just uh, decreased it, but I do want it up just a bit. Okay, now let's play around with the temperature. Um, let's see here, where do I wanna go with this photo? So you can see that the blues are still really nice um, of their shorts and shirt here. Um, increase my shadows, there we go. No, I think that's good. Um, I might go in here with a brush, my lighten up brush, and just do like a little bit there on her. Um, if you find that it's too much, you can always just go in here and adjust like bring the shadows down just a little bit. And I think that that would be good. I click done and do a little side by side. It might be a little bit bright, but um, I kind of like it like that. So let's move along here. Okay, I love the autumn colors. So I'm ex really excited to see um, what this preset does to this. Oh my God, I'm deceased. Look at that. Ah, oh my God. I'm actually obsessed with this one. I've never shared this photo. I don't know why. Um, I should, maybe I will, I'm totally going to. Okay, so let's just increase exposure a little bit. Um, I'm just gonna decrease my temperature just a tad and increase my tint. This is gonna make it look even richer. There we go. Um, I really like how dark this photo is. Let's go, so if I wanted it brighter, I can also just click light and shadows. So that brings everything up just a little bit. Um, but I'm gonna actually maybe add in a little bit more vignetting. So I kind of like how moody this one is. Increase my highlights and I might actually bring a little bit of that warmth back. Okay, increase my contrast a bit. Decrease my shadows. I'm just speaking out loud. These are just everything that's going on in my head. I hope I hope you guys are still with me here. It's been 43 minutes. <laughs> okay, only a few more to go. Here is the side by side. Beautiful. I actually really liked what it did with the greens there. Really nice. Okay. Here's another workshop photo. Surprise, surprise. Okay. Here is um, my base preset. So this one might be a good example of using the um, skin fix. So if I thought that this was too orange, I could click skin fix while still maintaining the overall warmth of the image. Um, I'm going to increase my contrast here. I want to keep this one really nice and moody, so I'm not going to do too much with the um, exposure there. I might even bring down my highlights just a bit. Definitely needs a little bit of magenta. Not too much. That was too much there, um, but that's probably good. And then if I go in and add a little bit of vignetting, it's going to make it even more moody. Ooh, that's good. Okay, so now that I added the vignetting, I think it needs a little bit more brightness, though. Just to really draw the attention to the center of the photo. Oh, love it. Here's the side by side. All right, here's a nice bright. This is a sunrise session, actually. Haven't done one of those in a very long time because I don't normally go to bed until around two or three. So <laughs> I'd have to pull all nighters in order to do those. So uh, this photo is too warm right off the bat. So I'm going to decrease my temperature. Oh, I like that. I like it. I like it a lot. Oh, maybe increase my shadows just a little bit. Okay, I'm kind of obsessed. Increase my uh, tint just a little bit. Damn, guys. Oh, I like it. Perfect. Next one. So this one's also from my online workshop. Um, it's obviously underexposed, so I'm just, I clicked the base preset, increase my exposure. Okay, so this one, I'm gonna bring my temperature down a little bit. Wait, maybe not. I think it needs a little bit of magenta. Yes, that's what it needed. Okay, so I'm just going to increase my contrast now and my shadows just a little bit. Oh, that's good, I like it. Um, the only thing that I might do is go in here 
and use lighten up. I'm just gonna make my brush a little bit smaller. Oopsies, that might be a little bit too bright. Okay, beautiful. And then his hand and arm just a little bit there too. Perfect, here's the side by side. So um, one thing that I really like about um, these presets is that I can edit quite bright like this one, even though it was a, a moody image to begin with. Um, but it also simultaneously flows really nicely within my feed. Um, I don't ever want to be limited to what I share because of my editing. So that's why I do like to um, include both brighter photos like this and then moodier ones like this. And they still work um, nicely side by side because I am using the exact same preset. So the tones of the shadows and the tones of the highlights are the same. So even though they're very different photos, they still aesthetically go together and they don't stand out like a sore thumb. So regardless of what presets you use, I highly recommend you sticking with one or two that go really nicely together that don't limit you to what you can share online. So I'm going to go ahead and just click the base preset. And this will be a good one to show you guys um, how I use the skin fix. Um, cause I think that right off the bat, their undertones of their skin are just far too orange. So I'm just going to click the skin fix. Perfect. And if I want it to be warmer, I will just increase my temperature overall of the image. Um, I actually don't think I'd do too much more with this. Maybe a bit of contrast. Yeah, I like that. Let's see what the vignetting looks like. I think that that might be a little bit unnecessary, so we don't have to. Perfect. I love it. Here's the side by side. Perfect. Okay. So I did want to show you guys a forest one because I think it's important to make sure when you purchase a preset that they can do almost everything that you want. Um, there's obviously going to be some images where you just struggle more with. I still have this often, uh, which is why I created this new pack. So, um, so I'm just going to click my base preset. What I always recommend is getting the overall tone of the image, how you want it particularly looking at the skin and then tweaking things afterwards. So I'm just kind of looking at their faces. Um, obviously forests, especially in the middle of the day like this, can create a lot of yellow and green casting on the skin. So it's kind of a nightmare sometimes. This image wasn't too bad. Um, but you can see that the preset here also maintained the blue of his jacket, which is one thing that I used to struggle with so much because um, the pre my presets... Um, I mean, it's really hard to, to create a preset that's not going to alter all of the colors, right? Um, so with the blues, I was just struggling keeping the blues nice and blue still. I was always doing tweaks afterwards. So this one, I particularly uh, paid attention to the blues to make sure that they were still maintained. Um, so I'm just going to right now, just going to focus on their faces. I'm going to brighten up his face a little bit. And honestly, I think that uh, I might just increase temperature just a bit. But overall, uh, just looking at this photo, I... I actually don't think it's bad. Um, the editing, uh, if I was to do nothing to it, would be fine. But if I want to make it a little more rich, a little more forest-like, um, just because there's a lot of highlights in here from the reflection from the leaves, um, if I wanted to add color back in there, that's where I can go in with my brush tool and I can use maybe the deep forest one or the, um, the punchy green one, depending on the aesthetic that you want to go with. So uh, let's just use the, um, the dark forest one. So I'm just making a big brush, making sure that when I get close to them, that I just kind of back off a little bit. Uh, but let's give it a shot here. Okay. So just keeping my distance from them. Okay. There we go. Oh, I kind of love it. I'm just going to go in with a smaller brush around his hair there. Oh, that's nice, actually. You know what I'm going to do to make this one even a little bit more moody? Um, is just maybe add in some vignetting in there. I think that'll be good. Okay. Oh, I really like that, guys. Yeah. Let's see here. Maybe I can even add a bit more vignetting. Just a touch. Okay. I struggled so hard editing this photo or this like series of photos for my couple. And I think I just, I think I'm so happy right now. I'm so happy. <laughs> this works so good. Okay. So I would, here's the before and after of that image. Okay. I'm pretty obsessed. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say that, but I'm doing it. Okay. 
Here is, this one's really warm straight out of camera as well. So let's just go in here with the preset. It does um, really kind of bring out those reds, which is nice, uh, but you can back them off if you want by doing the skin fix. Um, I happen to like them, so let's just roll with it. Uh, increase my contrast a bit. I'm gonna increase uh, the dehaze here just a little bit as well. And maybe increase my tint just a bit as well. And then I think we could handle some vignetting. Oh yeah, it can. Heck yes, it can. Okay, and I might just go, no, I think that's good. Uh, I would probably go in Photoshop and just um, fix a few of these little flyaways here. Uh, but for the sake of this video, I'm just, just gonna leave it. Um, let's go move along to this one. This is Dana Cole. If you know her, she's an amazing photographer. Uh, let's click base preset. Ooh. So this one, in this particular photo, it really does knock those greens down, uh, but that's okay. I'm, I'm digging it. I'm here for this. <laughs> increase my tint, uh, increase my, I think I'm going to decrease my exposure a bit here, just a little bit and increase my contrast. Oh, I like it. I want to do some vignetting a little bit. Oh yeah. Uh, so now that the vignette vignetting is there, I'm going to back off on the contrast a bit and bring up the exposure again. Not too much. Oh, so I just want to look at the before and after here for a second. I'm just uh, paying attention to the flowers mostly. I want to make sure that they still look nice and not too far off from what the original was. And uh, I think we're pretty good. Purples are a little bit gone there, but that's okay. Um, oh, I like me likey. I'm just going to go to my lighten up brush here and just there we go. And I think that her face could handle a little bit of warmth as well. So let's just go in here one more time to the golden glow. Okay. And it might be a little bit too much there. So I'm going to um, just back it off just a little bit there. Okay. There's the side by side. Oh, I really like that. Okay. Two more guys, two more. Okay. Here's my all-time favorite clients. They booked me forever ago for their wedding, and it's just been so lovely to um, capture all of their miles milestones along the way. Um, so they're very special to me, and I'm so in love with their maternity session. I'm obsessed with doing maternity photos. I just think it's such a cool time in people's lives. And just if you've had a baby or you've been pregnant, um, you know what I mean when I when I say it's just so such a cool feeling. Even if you don't feel well. It's just still such a cool thing having a human growing inside of you. <laughs> okay, so I'm just increasing my shadows. I might add some vignetting here. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to add that, but I'm also going to just back it off a little bit here and just leave that lens vignetting. And I think I'm going to warm it up even a little bit more uh, and then also increase my tint just a bit. Ooh, that's nice. And then I'm going to also bring in a graduated filter and I'm going to leave it as my golden glow and just kind of uh, bring that down a bit here, like, like so. And let's see, I'm just playing with the saturation a bit of that. Oh yeah, that's good. Let's see the before and after. Oh, I just love them so much too. So I'm really biased, but I freaking love this photo. Okay, I wanted to show you guys this one. So a lot of people, um, if you know what lenses I use, my go-tos are my 35 1.4 and my 85 millimeter 1.2. So many people, their biggest complaint about the 85 is that it's too hazy, it's too hazy, but they just maybe haven't played in, around enough with the files afterwards. Um, it happened. So I don't shoot a ton of my 85, but I'm always carrying it on me. Um, a lot of times though, even though I'd say maybe I use it for like 5% of my session, my full session, some of my favorite images have come from that lens. So um, if you know how to use it right and you know um, what you're looking for when you're shooting using this lens, um, I'm going to show you how truly magical this lens can be. So I'm going to go ahead and click my base preset going to increase my dehaze here. This is where the magic happens, folks. Do you see this? Do you see this? Magic, right? Increase my exposure a bit. I'm going to add in vignetting. I'm going to increase my whites. Whoopsies. There we go. And my highlights. 
and I'm going to go in here, use my low light noise reduction, which uh, when you're zoomed in um, will show up a little bit nicer, nicer. There we go. I'm going to now fit it again here, increase my contrast and decrease my shadows. Okay, so this photo looks so ethereal to me. This maybe wouldn't even necessarily be my style, but do you see what we just did here? Like that is magic. That is absolute magic. <laughs> I say we, like you're actually editing here with me. Anyways, I'm just going to go in here with my golden glow. No, I'm not. Just kidding. <laughs> it's a little too warm there on her, um, but I would be happy with that. Uh, I think this is a really um, cool transformation of a photo. Um, yeah, I think we'll call that a day. And guys, that is a wrap. I just edited 36 photos for you guys. So I hope that you're able to see how versatile these are. Um, if you want to give them a shot, um, feel free to send me a raw file or two. I'm happy to sit down when I have the time um, to try them out for you. So I honestly can say that these presets are my current favorite and I'm so happy with all of the brushes that I made. You know, I was doing this beforehand anyways, but I just wasn't saving them. Uh, I wasn't saving the brushes, so I thought, I'm gonna just actually make these a thing so that it's easier for me, it's easier for other people. My goal is always to make other people's lives easier through my products and my tools. So I hope that you love them if you end up getting them and thank you so much for your support. Honestly, um, if you guys weren't supporting me, I wouldn't be doing this. So thank you so much uh, for each and every penny you spend in my shop, uh, each and every amazingly sweet, kind comment on my photos. I, I see you and I appreciate you. Um, thank you guys so much. If you want to learn more and you like hanging out with me, um, I go live every Tuesday for the most part uh, on my private Facebook group called Stay Inspired with Ange McCabe. Um, it's called Just the Tip Tuesdays. So that's Tuesday at 1 p.m. PST every week. If uh, sometimes it doesn't happen, but I'll let you guys know, or if I change the time, I will also let you know. Um, I know that I'm I'm pretty busy, just like a lot of you guys. Um, so I find it sometimes it's really hard to connect with people as much as I would like online. So that's where I like to use my my Tuesday Facebook Live sessions and also um, going live on Instagram. I find is a really nice way to connect with people, especially now in the world when you know, we can't see our friends and family as much as we'd like to, or if, you know, if at all. So I find that it's really important um, for our own well-being just to, um, to, to connect, even if it's online, you know. So thank you so much for being here. Um, if you do purchase these, I hope you love them so much. And please share your work with me. I would love to see. I uh, hope you guys stay safe and healthy, my friends. Take care.